hi guys welcome back to mama soj vlog how are you guys doing if you are new here you are welcome and if you are returning subscriber god bless you as you always come back to watch my video my people don't be smart you know and i know seeing a different news now they land from my table and as the news they come that's why they carry and call you to come share and water now my people for today's video go to watch her together with now all right my people we could go watch the video to see what really they apple for inside the video my people how time you people left the stage why don't you just go away? We need an infusion of fresh blood into the system. For some people, maybe they read it as a bloodletting. No, I said infusion of fresh blood. I said so. I cannot support you. I think your generation should really quit. Right. He wasn't the only one. I then sought out uh, the current president-elect, uh, Ahmed Tinubu. And I gave him exactly the same message. I said, whatever you people are planning, I'm convinced that we need a young generation, new thinking, new sensibilities, new energies. So why don't you just leave this thing? Let's look for somebody, a really brilliant individual, and then you use your entire, your influence to catapult that person to power. And this country will see a massive transformation we spoke for about an hour and a half. In the end, Bala Tinubu said, no. He said, uh, there were still things which he felt he could contribute. Do you know, I have not, Bala Tinubu and, uh, and myself have not met. That's over, getting to five years ago. We've not met once since. Simultaneously, we called uh, willing and enthusiastic, and bringing young people together and we said, look, come together, give us a candidate. We'll back that candidate with all our resources. We need somebody else at the, at the helm of affairs. And so, for me, the emergence of the uh, Peter Obi movement is the consequence of events like that, including, as I've stated, the NSARS movement. And all this was done in a democratic spirit. Persuasion, campaigning, mobilizing, sometimes even tutoring prospective candidates. Whether or not my position at the time towards Atiku or Tinumbu was correct or not, that's not important. All I'm trying to tell you is to say that we acted out of conviction and therefore we have absolutely no reason to appear even uh, to be against any new generational possibility, potential, uh, in, in, when in time for election comes. I have been distressed, however, by this, uh, certain aspects of this movement, which for me tended towards the fascistic. And we haven't come this way, this, all this distance, made all this sacrifice, to watch the entire procedure being jeopardized permanently with unpredictable consequences if we get to a situation where threatening medicine language is being used, where people are beginning to be afraid to talk, to advise, to contribute, simply because there's disagreement over tactics. And so this is what I was objecting to in, uh, in uh, Dati's performance. Uh, you can't say, give me this uh, mandate. There's also a third person there, as a Tiku, for instance. And in any case, the procedure is such that no one can say that we have seen terminus as yet. That's all. That's what I was, I was criticizing. And I was very distressed to see this being reported as if saying, swear this person in. Don't swear this person in. No, 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 no. That is a total distortion. And uh, public discourse, I believe, is jeopardized when that kind of misinterpretation is made of something which I have said. All right, Professor Sherinka, thank you very much for joining us. I just want to ask you, you have said that the statement made by uh, Dati Ahmed is unbecoming. And what some people might want to ask you is, what part of his statement did you find unbecoming? Was it the entirety of his statement or the fact that he had mentioned, and I quote, because a few things you had said, P 
people feel that it was quite strong, bearing in mind that other actors in this political process have said perhaps even worse things. So it would be good for you to tell us what part of his statement you found on becoming a, of a vice presidential candidate. And then the second aspect of this, since you've taken us back to uh, pre-election and you speaking to the principle of front, front runners in the, in the election process, is your assessment of the election process and the emergence of the president-elect? Again, I must apologize to you and your uh, audience if uh, I didn't catch your question correctly. I lost about two thirds of it. But I think I got the drift of what you were saying. And again, let me introduce myself further. I happen to be again that individual who, uh, after an election which was massively rigged, who sat in the plane waiting for the final result, the authenticated results to be brought to me. I was on my way to the United States to address the congr uh, a congressional hearing of the Nigerian elections on those particular elections. And I said to them, uh, the uh, Oshimali people, I said, I will do nothing if I do not have the right documentation, the latest authenticated in every respect, which I can present to the congressional hearing. It was brought to me from Edo State. It was brought to me while I was seated in the plane before the gates closed. With those documents, I was able to go confidently to Washington, where I met in Amani, by the way, and we joined forces to reverse the thinking of congressional hearing, which was already sold on the false results of the election throughout. The propaganda of the government then in power, I refuse to mention names, was so strong that when we got there, we found a hostile reception. However, Armed with those documents, we reversed the thinking of the congressional hearing. Now, this is the kind of person I am. I do my homework thoroughly. I don't like being stampeded. I don't like people making claims which they have not thoroughly investigated and unleashed on the, on the populace. And so when all these claims are going on. Uh, uh, please remember, I was away during those elections, but as soon as I came back, having been bombarded right, left, and center by so many comments, links being sent to me, I then pursued my inquiry. And my statement when I did that interview was this, that it's not yet time. The last word has not been spoken on these elections. So do not threaten people and further alienate even those who were on your side from the beginning. That's the message. So when I use the example of Donald Trump, look at him now, a common felon, who not only wanted to disrupt the entire system, to reimpose himself on the people, but went further and stormed the capital, resulting in some deaths, they don't use language of incitement, which leads to that kind of result. And I don't care who doesn't want to hear it. I speak the truth. People want to, they can listen, they may not listen, but there are precedents all over the world from which we can learn. And in this particular case, using the American system, uh, it's normal to use, uh, shall we say, uh, models of events to teach ourselves certain various levels, uh, lessons. And so that's it, you know, when I use, when I summon Donald Trump, it's simply to tell people, you're beginning to behave like Donald Trump. And that's not very good for democracy in this country. That's all. Well, Prof, the uh, fascism that you observe in the conduct of the uh, Third Force, at least some elements there, were you surprised? Isn't this uh, part of uh, the national character? And can we ever find a cure for Nigerians likely to behave like they are fascists? Sorry, <laughs> most of that I missed completely. Um, 
so it's very difficult for me to even guess the thrust of your... Okay, uh, I was asking you about fascism. The fascism you criticize in the conduct of certain elements in the emergent third force. Were you surprised, considering the fact that Nigerians tend to behave generally like fascists, whether they are in politics or they are in any other aspect? Can we ever find a cure for that kind of behavior? Um, any other access? Uh, please understand me. Civil action is always justifiable. In any situation of discontent, civil action is always possible. But then we also must be very guarded in our statement, the nature of civil action. If you say we're in a revolutionary state and we need a revolution, if you like a kind of show or a, revolutionary, a revolution now, then I understand your language. My people, now the video now on a new watch for so On a see what you for inside the video. All right, my people, I would like to end the video for you. Make let me know waiting on a thing for the comment section. And if you never subscribe, make sure subscribe so that you're not going to miss any latest gist way I upload. Now, bye bye till I come on away next time. Bye, guys. Catch you in the next video. Bye, guys.